Okay, Algebra 1, Chapter 3, Section 5, Sequences as Linear Functions. We've already discussed sequences, sequences before, but now we're going to take a look at them on a linear basis. So if I were to take a basic uh, sequence such as this, okay, we could agree that that was a, a basic sequence and from every point from there to there, there to there, there to there, we're going up two. So we could describe that sequence as uh, the next number is going to be 11 plus 2, which is going to be 13. That makes it linear because it's going up at a constant. And we know that our lines, after talking about slopes yesterday, will either go up or they will decrease as well in a linear way. So we could take a look at an example, um, maybe something like this. Um, 24, 20, and et cetera, et cetera. And we could see that in this case, we're going to be decreasing by four at each given interval. So we have one on the left that's rising, but we have one on the right that is falling, just like we have for slopes. So I'm going to go ahead and go right towards a fraction because those seem to be the ones we're intimidated by the most. And the question you might see here is, is this an arithmetic sequence? So am I going up a constant value each time? Well, it's a little difficult, in my opinion, to be staring at all of these fractions because I'm either going to be adding or subtracting. And we've been taught when we're adding and subtracting fractions that we need a common denominator. So that's what I'm going to do first is I'm going to get a common denominator between two 8, 4, and 16. So if I count by all four of those numbers, the first one they're going to have in common is 16. So I'm going to change them all into sixteenths. Obviously, I won't have to change the 13 sixteenths into a sixteenth because it already is one. So 2 divides in, or 2 multiplied by what is going to give me 16? That is 8. So I'm going to multiply the top by 8 as well. 8 times what is 16? That would be 2. So 5 times 2 is 10. 4 times what is 16? That would be 4. So 4 times 3 is 12. So those are my three fractions. Let's see if they go up a constant. From here to here, we're at 2 sixteenths. And we're going up. We could reduce that to 1 eighths, but we're actually not going to need to you'll see here in just a minute. The next one, we are also going up 2 sixteenths. But then you'll notice in the final one, we only go up 1 sixteenth. So that spacing means that it is not constant. So this would not be linear. And it's also not an arithmetic sequence. So just depending on the question they ask, they might ask, is it an arithmetic sequence? Obviously, that would be no. And is it linear? Of course, that would be no as well. Okay, so again, that's just adding or subtracting. Now, let's take it to one more level. And let's say I have the sequence negative 12, negative 8, negative 4, 0. And let's say that I wanted to find the 20th term. Okay, so first let's determine if it is an arithmetic sequence. So from negative 12 to negative 8, we are adding 4. From negative 8 to negative 4, 
we are adding 4. And from negative 4 to 0, we are adding 4. So by our test, it is an arithmetic sequence. So there is a formula where we can find the nth term. And that formula is nth a to the nth term equals the original term or the first term. And we're going to add to that the number we're finding minus 1 times the difference. Okay, so a to the n in this case is we're going to be finding our 20th term. So that's the term we're looking for. a to the 1 is the first term. So in our case, that's going to be negative 12. n okay, is the actual number of the term. So that's where we're going to find, or that's where we're going to substitute in the 20. And then d is our difference. So in this case, our difference is a plus 4. So let's plug in the things that we know. We're finding the 20th term. So our original term is, what do we start out with? Negative 12. Plus, we're finding the 20th, so that's 20 minus 1, times our difference, which is 4. Now, I go ahead and do that parenthesis. Okay, <laughs> I've substituted in the wrong thing. All right, let's rewind. Let's go back to here. Okay. In, and I made a mistake over here. I already used the term. In is the actual number that we're finding. Sorry about that. Okay, so now let's go back to it. We're finding the 20th term. So that's going to be the first term. It's still negative 12. Plus n is always going to stay n because that's the number that we're finding in just a minute. And then that's times the difference, which again, our difference was plus 4. So this is going to be negative 12 plus, now this is distributive property, so that's 4 times n, which is 4n, and 4 times negative 1, which is negative 4. So let's combine some like terms. I don't have any n's, so I'm just going to keep that 4n right there. And I have negative 12 minus 4, which is negative 16. So that's how I find my 20th term. So now I substitute it in. Oh, it disappeared. There we go. My 20th term, that's n equals 20. So that's going to be 4 times 20 minus 16, which is 80 minus 16. That gives us a grand total of 64. So you could, you could have taken that and added 4 and gone all the way out, or you can use the little formula. So let's do, um, let's do one more of those so I can get that pretty solid. Okay, so let's find the 28th term of this. First, let's look at our sequence. We added 2. We added 2, and we added 2, so that tells me it is a sequence. So to find the 28th term, we're going to take our first term, which is negative 4, plus, then we parenthesis our n minus 1, times the difference, which in this case is 2. So that gives us negative 4 
plus, we draw our arrows, 2n minus 2. Combine like terms, that's going to be 2n, negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6. So I'm going to take that 2n minus 6 and sub in 28. Twenty-eight times two is going to give me fifty-six. So that twenty-eighth term is going to be fifty. Okay, so not quite eleven minutes. That is chapter three, section five, sequences of linear functions.